Welcome back. You're watching News Center. Google has ramped up its artificial intelligence push. The tech giant has introduced a slew of key upgrades at its I.O. event in California. These largely include the release of new Gemini and Gemma models. Google has also introduced Project Astra, a new multimodal AI agent, which has been touted as the future of all AI assistants. Ashmit Kumar reports from the Google headquarters in San Francisco. Well, I'm coming to you from Mountain View, California. I'm at the site of the Google campus, at the site of the Google I.O. 2024. Sundar Pichai and his team had promised some breakthrough announcements. They've made a few of them. Uh, we'll take our viewers through them one by one. The biggest announcement, of course, was uh, uh, VO. This is uh, the new AI generative tool uh, that was announced today. This, what this does is that it turns textual prompts into videos. Now, what's important is that this comes on the close on the heels of OpenAI Sora, and that had created huge tidal wave, so to speak, as far as the content creation space is concerned. What can this do? This, this tool of generative AI turning textual prompts into videos, uh, videos being generated, VO generates videos to the tune of 1080p. These are high resolution videos we're talking about. Uh, what does this mean? There were talk of how this may revolutionize the content creation space, the media industry and production houses going forward. Uh, that was just one announcement. The other, of course, was integration of Gemini with Google Search. Uh, this, Google says, will help customize, curate results as per the individual needs of users. So whether you want to plan an itinerary for a trip that you may want to go to or whether you're looking for a restaurant based on certain budget considerations, uh, this uh, product will do that for you. First available in the US and then subsequently in the rest of the world. There is also talk, there was one of the announcements made was integration of Gemini with Android. This again will help uh, improve your Android experience. At least that's what they're pitching it as. Uh, that whether you want to summarize a video, whether you want to draw inputs uh, from a PDF file, that can be done via this customization between Gemini as well as uh, Android. And finally, on the question of deepfakes, etc., that is one issue uh, where they have spoken about open sourcing of watermarking. This watermarking of uh, uh, synthetically generated content is something that has been long been spoken of in terms of addressing issues of deepfakes and misleading information. So important directions being given by Google on the way forward. A lot of big announcements uh, in the weeks and months to come, which right. will of course be followed upon. Uh, we're talking about integration of AI in our regular life. So whether that's how we create, plan, budget, travel, even play soccer. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I just want to get an insider's perspective. What in between these give you the most optimism, the most excitement, uh, going forward, what excites you the most uh, from some of the big announcements that we saw today? Well, I think, well, thank you, by the way. Glad you're here and hope you're enjoying the, the buzz and excitement of this place. Uh, I'm very, we're very excited about the fundamental progress we've made in, in, in our Gemini program. Mm -hmm. If you notice in the, in the announcements today, sure. we highlighted the fact that, you know, it is an incredibly natively multimodal model. It has long context, which is mm. spectacular. In fact, we actually upped the game there. Oh. We went from one million tokens two million. to two, yeah. right? Uh, the multimodality is amazing. And then we started to show some of the agentive capabilities okay. in these models. So if you take those three things, we try to show them everywhere. So you saw the examples in search, mm. what you can now do with search. You saw the examples in, you know, on, on Pixel. Mm -hmm. You saw the examples in Workspace, in Google Workspace. Uh, the examples in YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about the fact that now, now we're starting to bring these incredible advances to all of these products that our, you know, our users love and use every day, but also more importantly to developers, uh -huh. because the developers can build on these and rely on these tools. They're gonna do amazing things. I'm always excited by the fact that, by the way, that I, I don't know if you know this, the biggest signups we have in our AI studio uh -huh. for developers are from India. Oh, wow. I don't know if you know this. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that. Indian developers are using these tools. We love that. We're uh -huh. excited about that. In fact, we saw a very uh, potent example as well uh, as a part of that presentation uh, about how the developer community in India is responding to some of these tools. So that's exciting to learn. Uh, one aspect that you made a reference to was generative AI. Uh, that is causing a lot of excitement, uh, at least amongst the fellow journalists that I've been speaking to, uh, about VO, about, yeah. ima about Imagine, I mean, turning text prompts to video, to images, I think that uh, is expected to revolutionize the content creation space. Uh, I'm in conflict when I say this, I'm from the media. So <laughs> uh, there's a lot of changes coming. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Uh, we're very excited about VO. We're very excited about Image, Imagine 3. 
Uh, Veo in particular, is, I think, takes all the incredible innovations we've had in a whole range of the models that we have from Lumiere to Finanki and Irinaki and puts them all together. What we're trying to do is to put them in the hands of creators uh, who are trying to make films. And you probably saw the example of yes. Donald Glover who's working mm -hmm. on this to actually build, yeah. develop a film. So we have a lot of creators who are starting to play with these tools and see how they can be assisted. Very excited about that. Same thing with Imagine 3, our latest video model. So I think the generative aspects in media are extraordinary. I also hope you got to see Project Astra, uh, <laughs> which I think is probably getting a lot of the excitement from here. But that's the power of what these models, uh, models can do. I think the key, quite honestly, is our experience so far has been when you bring in developers and creatives and others to come work with these sure. tools and give us feedback and also start creating with them I think, you know, it's extraordinary. The product gets better, the technology gets better, the creators get a lot out of it, they get more, they get to do extraordinary things. In some cases, things that they couldn't do without these tools. Uh -huh. That's exciting. Uh, let me just ask a supplementary question. When we speak of image generation, uh, video generation, right. more recently, there was a lot of conversation that was had about Google, about Gemini, in terms of uh, the accuracy of the responses, especially visuals. Uh, is that something, uh, is that a challenge going forward? Or is that something that's an ever-evolving concept that you need to keep working on? One of the important things to keep in mind with generative technologies is these are predictive machines. Uh -huh. uh, they're predicting the next thing. So yeah, of course, when you apply these to generating outputs, they won't always get it right. Mm -hmm. So part of what we have to do and we've been doing is to make sure, are we doing enough red teaming? Are we doing enough evaluations? Mm -hmm. Can we use more innovative techniques? So you probably heard me mention today of the amount we're doing in red teaming, right. but we're now also doing what we've been calling AI-assisted red teaming right. to try to make sure the outputs are correct. So for now, what we've done is we've put our generative media outputs uh, images into labs, Google Labs, which is an experimental surface for us, and we're, you know, addressing and fixing some of the things in our mainstream products. That's why right now, Gemini app isn't generating images because we need to make sure we get that right. But I think it's going to be important to realize that as these technologies advance, uh, we're constantly going to have to uh, come up with more and more and better techniques to red team them to make them safe and responsible. Sure. I think that's fundamentally important. You mentioned the phrase, getting it right. right. Uh, on the flight here, I was watching your conversation with uh, your good friend, Mr. Friedman. And that's another uh, phrase that you've used previously as well, getting it right. Uh, in trying to maximize AI, we've seen uh, AI, a lot of use cases we're right. seeing across the campus today. Uh, in terms of getting it right, what does that mean? In terms of maximizing the benefit, one, at a civilizational level, uh, for the economy, for the larger society, and two, at the narrower micro level of an individual? I think getting it right for us uh, in broad strokes refers to two things. We need to get it right to make sure we, 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 we address the risks and complexities of this technology. The other part of it is make sure we actually maximize the benefits so that everybody benefits. And I think when I think about the benefits for this technology for people, it happens at the individual level, mm -hmm. people trying to be creative, imaginative, their everyday tasks, all of that. But it's also when it comes to powering the economy. Mm -hmm. Small entrepreneurs, small businesses, all the way to transforming sectors and whole economies. That's why I love what India has done with your infrastructure, digital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think that's an example of societal scale transformation of a technology to benefit the economy. So we think about getting it right in that sense. Uh -huh. We also think about getting it right in terms of the you know, advances you can have in science and societal benefits. I'm actually proud, by the way, uh, that our one of our most impactful things we're doing is on flood forecasting. Do you know where that project started? Uh -huh. Our India research team started oh, wow. that project. In fact, we started our, our flood forecasting work was actually pioneered oh, wow. by the, our Google plan. Research Indian team, okay. and we used it there. And now we're doing it in 93 countries. Uh -huh. So I think getting it right is about how do we make sure we get the benefits at the individual level, economy, societal level, mm -hmm. uh, to benefit everybody, at the same time address the risks and complexities. That's what getting it right means to us. You mentioned flood forecasting, right. uh, uh, and you mentioned the use of digital infrastructure that India is doing uh, to overcome the physical gaps in the infrastructure. Uh, 
Is this the way forward when we're speaking of uh, the use of AI uh, to address challenges, whether it's health, whether it's weather forecasting, drought management? Uh, can you give us a sense of the applications of this AI uh, when we're looking at an economy and geography like India and the challenges that it faces in terms of infrastructural deficit? I think the possibilities are enormous. I'll, I'll, let me set it two levels. I think when you look at the possibility of this technology advancing societal challenges, we've actually done some work looking at the SDGs. Uh -huh. and, the, and we actually have published a paper on this, that the possibility to advance many of the SDGs is very, very high. I can tell you some things we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're working on things like flood for, for, for forecasting, which has to do with almost climate adaptation, we're working on things like food security. We're working on applications to health. There are many places, and I imagine India, is, is similar where many countries in the global south they don't always have access to the you know not everybody has access mm -hmm. so this technology can help with access to maternal health maternal health information we've done work on diabetic retinopathy for example to help people in places that don't have access so the possibilities from a health climate adaptation from the point of view of addressing food and food security i think are enormous and we've done a lot of work in those areas but i think the opportunities are phenomenal Let's talk about the India story. Uh, right. What is Google's vision for India? How is Google looking at India? Is it looking at India uh, as a very large data set? Is it a talent pool? Is it a, 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 a potential huge customer base? What, how, how, what is the vision uh, for India? I'm very excited about India. I mean, I'll tell you why we're excited about India. You know, you know, I can see several characteristics that make it extraordinary. It's a young population, demographically. Mm -hmm. It's a mobile first society. Uh, and it's been remarkably innovative and pioneering in terms of putting in place a digital infrastructure that helps its, its people and its citizens. So you look at that and then you also look at the incredible economic possibilities from this technology, societal possibilities. Uh -huh. I think India is an extraordinary place where this technology will be incredibly helpful mm -hmm. to advance what Indians are trying to do. So we hope that, you know, hopefully there's a lot of Indian developers here mm -hmm. at I.O that they're taking these tools and thinking about how do they transform this society, how do they innovate, build businesses, uh, solutions and applications of this technology that transforms uh, Indian society. I think the possibilities are endless. So if there's any role we can play in supporting, enabling uh, those entrepreneurs and India capitalize on this technology to advance India, I think that's terrific. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of News Center. More news continues on CNBC TV 18. Stay tuned.